Last week, I was away for work-related reasons, and as a result, the BBC saw an opportunity to drop a load of Doctor Who news, a lot of announcements, a lot of collaborations, and what we're going to do, we're going to rapid-fire through most of it. I may forget or lose a few things, but they a lot has happened over the past fortnight for Doctor Who, so we're going to try and go over it really, really quickly. First things first, we know that Block 3 of filming has just started. There was a brief uh, one or two week break between Blocks 2 and 3, and now Block 3 has fully started, and we're now getting images of Doctor Who in the 1960s. We got these wonderful photos of Shooter Gatwa as the 15th Doctor, and Millie Gibson as Ruby Sunday in their costume on location filming a 1960s set episode whether or not this is the 1960s story that is potentially revolving around roswell or the story the script that rusty davis says was the best thing he ever wrote that remains to be seen but we're seeing shooting Gatwa in a beautiful blue suit with an afro he's got white stripes on the suit the buttons the 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 um the loaf no not the loafers the brogues i don't know i don't know shoes i don't know fashion at all but yeah and ruby sunday here as well in the she looks honestly like a bond girl in this and i think that's the vibe that they're going for curly blonde hair they've got the black and the white uh the 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 top there as well and there's just some awesome photos that have come out of the shoot presumably because they were going to be filming on location and they wanted to get official production images out rather than fuzzy low res photos taken from onlookers as well the shoes are oxford thank you toby you are you are the costume expert after all of the mr tyler's live stream so these are some awesome photos and it's not just oh let's get you up against a wall and let's start shooting some stylish pictures i love those earrings as well that's really really cool um yeah let's look let, let's not just get you against a brick wall let's do some stylish stuff let's have shooter gatwell checking out the afro in this car reflection on the window it looks so cool these are some awesome photos and also dr Dris yes dr dripsco um and disco might be absolutely appropriate because we could be getting a musical themed episode we got these images as well of drag artist jinx monsoon in costume as quote the doctor's most powerful enemy yet now you may remember that wording the doctor's most powerful enemy yet that I believe was the exact same wording that Russ T. Davis used to describe Neil Patrick Harris's character in the 60th anniversary. If they are a Time Lord, they could be regenerating into this other form, and it may make sense that you get Neil Patrick Harris to do a musical-themed episode, and Jinx Monsoon's costume here has got the piano key collar, so we actually could be getting a musical-themed episode, or a musical episode. Jinx Monsoon has just come off Broadway, was it? Where she was playing Mama in a production of Chicago, so she is, you know, fresh off the bat from another musical, and we're looking forward to seeing who on earth this character is but that wasn't all this past week we got a proper teaser for the 60th anniversary specials that dropped between programming on the bbc one channel and let's just play the little teaser in its entirety so there's not a lot of new footage there. I, literally, there's not a lot of new footage there. This shot of the TARDIS windows is from Planet of the Dead, apparently. Some very eagle-eyed people uh, noticed that. Uh, also, the only brand new shot, I think, is this one of the hand, but that could even be taken from Journey's End or the Stolen Earth. This shot of a soldier with blue eyes uh that looks new i think we've seen this shot and this shot before in previous trailers but still interrupting the broadcast interrupting the bbc ident fly traps so maybe it could be some symbolism i don't know but that could just be them interrupting the ident there is also this as well there's a high-res version of this network error uh full screen this status connection timed out error message e298 etc uh, etc et people think that this means that it could be a tease for a trailer to drop around eurovision which is in a week or two's time uh, that's going to be broadcast on the bbc now eurovision doesn't have advert breaks as far as i'm aware so it'll probably drop beforehand eurovision will end at like 1 or 2 a.m and i don't think they'll drop a doctor who teaser at the end of eurovision at 2 a.m it will likely be before the broadcast people saying reverse it i already have it ready Ready. i'm already ready folks i am playing five dimensional chess with your heads here's a reversed version of the teaser trailer uploaded by dr hootube Cryptic. My 
see this face come back. Are you monsters happy now? Are you happy? Anyway, so we got the uh, 14th Doctor saying cryptic, I hate that. And Donna Noble saying, why did this face come back? If you listen very carefully. I hate that. Why did this face come back? And Evil Dalek is right. So that's the series four version of the theme tune. So that's basically it. Uh, we can maybe assume that there's going to be a Eurovision trailer dropping in about two weeks' time. Re-re-reverse it. Okay, folks, we're, we're playing 10-dimensional chess now. <laughs> Eurovision final ends at 11 a.m. and starts on 7 I thought it went around later, but either way, EV130523... Eurovision is the 13th of the 5th, 23, 100% something around Eurovision, uh, probably just before 7pm. I don't even know why I bother, chat. You folks are just here with all of the information or all of the decoding. I massively appreciate it. So, yeah, th there's probably a trailer coming out soon. There's not really much new footage here, though, apart from this guy who might be one of the Wrath Warriors in disguise or something, uh, who is going to be at war with the Meep, who I have on a shirt. But something else to look forward to as well concerning the 14th Doctor is that they have collaborated with the uh, CBBC mainstay show, Blue Peter. They have launched a fan art competition uh, where you can win an exclusive tour of the Doctor Who set. Here's a write-up of it from Cult Box. There's a brand new Blue Peter badge to celebrate the 60th anniversary of Doctor Who. The top 500 competition entries will receive a limited edition Blue Peter competition badge. Uh, the uh, uh, entrance must have parents or guardians permission be between 5 and 15 years old and the deadline is monday the 15th of may you are asked to draw your own doctor who fan art to celebrate the 60th birthday of the show and explain in their own words why they would like to go behind the scenes on the doctor who set in no more than 100 words so these people these lucky lucky people are going to be seeing the brand new tardis set that has been especially built for series 14 of doctor who and has yet to be officially revealed, which is actually pretty exciting. Let's have David Tennant explain it. Thank you so much to a uh, friend of the live stream, Tharys, for uploading the clip. Let's have David Tennant explain the competition. Hello, Doctor Who fans and Blue Peter viewers. It's me, David Tennant. I'm the Doctor. Now, Blue Peter and Doctor Who have joined forces to create a limited edition badge as part of a brand new competition for Blue Peter and for Doctor Who's 60th birthday. The show that is, because obviously the Doctor's well over 900 years old. So to enter, Draw your very own Doctor Who fan art, and the competition prize will give a young Doctor Who superfan the chance to win an exclusive VIP tour of the top secret Doctor Who set. Come on! If I was aged between 5 and 15 years old, I would most definitely be applying. Although saying that, there is a time machine knocking around somewhere. Anything's possible. Don't blink. Don't even blink. Get drawing. Send your entries in before Monday the 15th of May at 5pm. All the details are on the Blue Peter website. There is a good 99% chance that he improvised the majority of that. He was told, 5 to 15, here's the deadline, there's the badge. And he, he just looks so intense and the hair is going a little bit wrong. Like, you can even hear, listen very, very carefully, the moment you hit play, because it sounds like he's talking over somebody else on set. Hello, Doctor Who fans. It sounds like he jumped the gun. The director called action at the exact same time he went for it. Hello, Doctor Who fans. <laughs> anyway, yeah, he, he's just... I also think he might be a little bit drunk there. And that's not an issue as far as I'm concerned. I just think it's very, very funny. So, yes, for those in the chat, this is a competition for people aged between 5 and 15. So, some people said that in the chat that they were going to be entering it, which means you are maybe under the age of 15. So, I need to be very, very careful and not say the word f*** on live stream. Be I be kind of adopt a child. Yes, I, I found this child in this, in this shopping trolley. <laughs> But wait, there's more. Announced in the latest issue of Doctor Who magazine, Panini Publications are dropping a brand new Doctor Who Chronicles issue, issue 8, covering 1963 to 1964, which means after this is released on the 8th of June, the majority of the Hartnell era will be covered in these publications. These are really, really good. The one from 1965 has been an incredible resource while putting together the Hartnell Marathon. This will cover the show's inception and its first big big proper year 
of production, a 116-page publication going from An Unearthly Child up until the Dalek Invasion of Earth in late 1964. Uh, this comes out on June 8th. You can also get prior back issues on the Panini website. I recommend pre-ordering this because these do tend to sell out pretty quickly. And if you want free delivery, they also have a showrunner special episode, uh, a showrunner special magazine that you... I also got that as well, so postage and packaging was free because it was over £20 overall for everything. But Doc 2 Chronicles issue 8 is available to pre-order now on the Panini website. Also, other publications, Penguin, they announced a brand new Penguin book to go with their Doctor Who and mythology on their Doctor Who and history theme that they've been doing over the past year or so. We had the fourth Doctor with Robin Hood. We had the 10th Doctor with King Arthur. We also had the 13th Doctor with the Wizard of Oz, oddly enough. And now we've got Doctor Who, Josephine, and the Argonauts. The Doctor meets the Greek myths in this brand new Doctor Who and Puffin Classics crossover, which will see the third Doctor and Joe Grant go back to Greek mythology in a story written by Paul Magras. And that is an awesome cover. Where I, yeah, I just love the arc style there. Um, it was a kind of portal, a portal into the myths of the ancient world. Everyone knows the Doctor loves museums, but when Joe Grant and the Doctor visit the British Museum in London, they might have got more than they bargained for. A mysterious object is revealed, which grants those who touch it strange visions of Greek myths. Gods, warriors, and monsters are contained within this device, which its discoverer calls the Mythoscope. But there is something sinister at play. A powerful influence seems to be controlling the Mythoscope, mastering it. Joe and the Doctor must enter the Mythoscope to face an old and terrible enemy, bargaining with Zeus, battling dragons, and journeying into the Underworld. As dangers beset them on all sides, only an object of wondrous power can save them from total destruction. Uh, this comes out on the 24th of August, 2023, and is available to pre-order now on the Penguin website. Also, speaking of other masterful elements and something more sinister at play, we've got the first announcement for the Titan Comics Doomsday crossover, which is going to be starring Suze Kempner as Doomsday for the 60th anniversary transmedia storytelling event. Missy returns in Doomsday comic series. The two-issue series is the first story to be announced in the multi-platform Doomsday adventure to celebrate the show's 60th anniversary. Titan Comics are thrilled to announce a two-issue comic series launching on July 5th, 2023 as part of the doc 2 multi-platform event doomsday it will feature fan favorite character missy on the trail of new character doom who makes her comic book debut so we've got the covers here but in order to get a better look at it i've got this one so you can see there's two variants there's a live action version which you know looks all right and i think it's cool to have suze kempner as like a live action embodiment of this character across the different media but this illustrated version looks so significantly better in my opinion it's not even close if i'm going to be picking this up it is going to be that illustrated version that illustrated cover you can now pre-order these on forbidden planets on comiXology and other places where comic books are sold uh, this is going to be written by jody hauser who has done an incredible 13th doctor run for uh, titan comics as well highly recommended with art by roberta ingranata who has done witchblade there's a photo cover variant cover and this cover comes from celebrated artist pascala uh, qualano i probably butchered that name i apologize but this drops on july 5th and it is the first event in the doomsday transmedia event Multiplatform is now called Transmedia. Absolutely, because it pisses off conservatives because you use the word trans. Anyway, uh, speaking of other media and other masterful stuff, we have the story details and the cover artwork released for the new War Master box set, which is coming out in June 2023, next month, as a matter of fact. The War Master Solitary Confinement. So this is going to be seeing Derek Jacobi reuniting with former iClaudia star Dame Sean Phillips. Uh, and we've got a quartet of stories, The Wars of Absence by James Goss, The Long Despair by Tim Foley, The Life and Loves of Mr. Alexander Bennett by Alfie Shaw, and The Kicker by Trevor Baxendale. This story sees the War Master in the Drain Institute, home of the galaxy's most criminally deranged. He has no memory of how he got there, and he's going to have to try and break out. Now, I'm a little bit torn on this because the last story, The Kicker, is written by Trevor Baxendale, and unfortunately, 
unfortunately, Trevor Baxendale on Twitter uh, is frequently supporting and liking and retweeting tweets which uh, are just full of transphobia. Uh, it's a bit of a shame that to have somebody like that associated with a release like a uh, with a range like this. Uh, I'm debating how thoroughly I can cover it in all good conscience because of Trevor Baxendale's involvement in it. This was likely recorded and put together long before his bigotry was known to Big Finish Productions. When was this recorded? Does it say? The 4th of October and the 28th of January. Uh, I don't have the timeline of Trevor Baxendale, unfortunately, so you folks will have to let me know. But anyway, so this is coming out in June 2023. Next up, we've got The Seventh Doctor versus The Vash de Narada. This is the follow-up story from Sullivan and Cross AWOL last year, where The Seventh Doctor is travelling around with Sullivan and Cross, who are both working at UNIT. And these are two stories, Operation Dusk by Alfie Shaw and Naomi's Ark by by Alison Winter, and the first one, Operation Dusk, takes place during World War II, and the Vashta Narada are on Earth as the Doctor, Harry, and Naomi get caught up in an investigation on the streets of London. And Naomi's Ark, caught up in a galactic evacuation triggered by a supernova, Naomi is separated from her friends in the company of some very unusual aliens, the Doctor and Harry are stranded too, and any attempt to reach Naomi is at the expense of a precious endangered civilization, one that rivals the Time Lords for longevity and wisdom. How far will the doctor go for his friends so this also comes out next month as well the seventh doctor far from home and lastly we've got peter davison and georgia tennant reuniting in a big finish adventure which is part of the once and future event for the 60th anniversary of doctor who this also features the sixth doctor as the curator and it's about the artist at the end of time colin baker makes a grand return as the curator and the doctor's daughter will be fighting a threat with the fifth doctor now this did kick up a little bit of a stink because the artist of this cover is lee johnson and they were found to have used a lot of ai generated artwork here for example the sixth doctor the curator's outfit here has a bow tie and a tie this artist here also has a ai generated outfit and an ai generated look and a lot of fans aren't happy with that because of what happens with yeah the implications of ai art and things like that uh, it was found as well that the first cover for past lives which is the once in a future event that comes out this month was also ai generated and you can kind of tell as well looking at the medley monk that outfit with this massive button here this weird tie as well these dinosaur creatures and armor are also ai generated as well for stuff like this i don't mind because it's imaginary creatures and it's probably quite difficult to have a decent looking original piece of artwork that you splice together for these things i kind of understand that but the costumes and the compositing and i don't really think that's you know i am not the right person to ask about this i'm kind of almost against ai art as a point of principle because i think that it would just be used as a way to devalue the work of artists digital or otherwise and is just going to be used as a cost-cutting measure even though you know you're going to have more people who are looking for work who are going to be wanting to make a living and until we have like a universal basic income or something ai art is just going to be taking jobs away from people with no way to refill those positions back up that's quite frustrating as well they should use ai as a base tool to help create the basis for which design is created yeah I, I agree with that as well especially for like original creatures like this like this guy i don't mind too much that this um artist at the end of time creature this robot thing or whatever is ai generated but also i think this covers significantly better this one looks a little bit messy but maybe that's kind of the point because it's about art and a gallery and the splodges and stuff like that i don't know like i think this is just a significantly better cover overall and it's only with like the monk's outfit that you can kind of tell that this was ai generated the reason why you're not getting that much uh, ai generation when it comes to music or at least not in an official capacity is because there are a million and one music lawyers who are ready to come down on anyone who is willing to use ai art to recreate voices or recreate artists or anything like that uh, and i think that's sort of the way that many other industries should go it's a fun novelty a fun thing to experiment with i get that and also i don't know how aware big finish were 
of this artist using AI generated art on their covers. I don't know if that's something that is agreed with Big Finish or part of any contracts or anything. But I think when you had like there was the curator in an other release that had awesome artwork of the curator on the front i think it was for stranded and it was basically just composited from different sources and it looked really really cool and it looked really really natural here we go it was it was for stranded four here's the curator there and this looks seamless and this was just done i don't want to say handcrafted digitally handcrafted for lack of a better term by the artist whereas this was just okay ai generate me a suit with a tie and also a bow tie this looks significantly better than this, in my opinion. Never mind the rest of the artwork and the cover, but this just looks a lot better and a lot more seamless and a lot more natural. Alex Wynn Composer, apparently there's some AI cast members in Torchwood, but apparently it's an element of the plot, so it's a weird middle ground. I need to listen, yeah, apparently James Goss was in an interview talking about the upcoming Torchwood Among Us range and saying that there were some AI actors in one upcoming episode. I need to hear the context. It could just be something that is openly parodying the idea of it without knowing what the context is. I'd need to kind of wait for it. But before going on this live stream, I actually listened to a, it was in my recommended, uh, Barack Obama singing the original We Are One Piece theme. And it actually bopped. It was, it was clearly a fun parody thing, of course. So it's not something I'd, I think should be sold commercially. But it was, it was pretty fire, Barack Obama singing One Piece. Anyway, speaking of Big Finish, let's go over their May releases real quick. So, this is an incredibly busy month for Big Finish, as was May 2022. So, the Torchwood monthly range is going on a brief hiatus while the Among Us series makes its way uh, through our headphones. Among Us Part 1 is dropping this month. Doctor Who Daleks Genesis of Terror. Purity Unleashed with the Sixth Doctor Adventures with Hebe and Mel. You've got Dark Season Legacy Rising with Kate Winslet involved and also, and also Russell T. Davis. I don't know anything about Dark Season, so, you know, I'm sure you folks will enjoy it, but this isn't really for me. I'm sorry. Doctor Who, Once and Future, Past Lives. You've got the special edition, though. However, the limited printing of the CDs of these special editions has now sold out. If you want the special edition, you have to go digital. We've got the Past Lives um, release here. The War Doctor Begins, Comrade in Arms, The War Doctor Returning, looking forward to that, and The Ninth Doctor Adventures, Pioneers.